Hello, Capricorn. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there's anything that you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here we have a Four of Swords. Now, we also had these other few cards, I'm going to try to keep them in order, that um, fell right out of the deck. So we're going to see what these are as well. We've got a Three of Wands. Oh, the Princess of Discs. There's some more air energy. Um, oh, this is really... This is really shaping up to be quite nice. Oh my goodness, look at these cards on the Path of the Serpent. These major arcana, Ace of Cups, Six of Discs. It's kind of perfect over here, right? Um, but I feel like we've got to, there's something we need to resolve over here. So um, don't do anything yet. Let's see what the Path of the Dove brings us. I know that the future here looks so terrific. It's easily to... Uh, it's easy to see the prize and start running toward it, but that's when we're going to fall into this snare, into this pit, right? So we have to be careful now more than ever because we're so close to this. I mean, this is just perfect over here, right? But we could be so enamored by this that we'll miss these kind of booby traps right here, right? So let's be careful. Let's do a mystery card with the Smith Weight Tarot. And this is the card that we're going to select randomly. We're not going to look at it until the very end. We'll put our frog friend right on top. And hopefully that card will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. Okay, so um, the first card that I intentionally drew was this Four of Swords. But then we also had some more air energy some fire, some water, some earth that came out, and then of course the majors, the water and the earth. It seems pretty balanced, it really does. There's, there's some majors, there's some of each element. It seems, seems really fine right now. The one thing that I am noticing is that it's a little heavy on the air, on the path of the dove, and we begin with the four of swords. Now we've had a lot of issues with the air energy lately with Capricorn. It seems there's always some kind of mischief, some kind of obstacle or friction or conflict going on with maybe an air sign person, but I think just so much air energy in a reading adds just a little bit of conflict or confusion or friction generally, right? So I think that's kind of what we have going on right now. So you need to really... Um, wrap. There's something that needs to be wrapped up before we get to this really perfect future, you know. There is um, perhaps some loose ends, some kind of issue that we need to address, okay. It may or may not be involving this air sign person. I don't think so. The To me, the Queen of Swords represents something different for you. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I think you're somebody that doesn't like to have loose ends, you know. You like to have, make sure everything is resolved and complete before you move on to the next thing, right? So you don't like there to be lingering conflicts with people. You know, it's not, you don't have a, a lot of disagreements kind of all over the place. When there is some sort of a problem, obstacle, whether it's with your own energy, whether it's with someone else's energy, um, or some kind of blockage anywhere, you like to address it head on. You don't really, you don't let it linger well, you do something else, you know, because then it's just kind of, it's one of those, it's one of those loose ends, right? And we don't, we don't like those. So we try to tie everything up as we can. As we get to it, we confront it, deal with it, then we can move on. Okay. I think in your life right now, you are relying on yourself 
for the life that you're creating, for the future that you are building. Okay, there's nobody that's doing it for you. Uh, there's no one that is making decisions for you. It could be that some of this air energy back here in, in yesterday's news, that could be somebody who maybe has tried making decisions for you, or it could be you waking up to your own power, right? Maybe in the past we did let people make decisions for us. You know, maybe we took a kind of a back seat to our own path. This queen of swords here, this is yesterday. This is you waking up to your own power. I feel like this is you really getting that clarity, rising above all of the energies to get a good bird's eye view of it. Being very honest with yourself. Let's just talk about this card, the queen of swords. Being very real and very honest with yourself. You're seeing things clearly now. You, we've cleaned our glasses. We've taken off the, the rose-colored glasses. We're seeing things for what they are. And I think this gave you, this gave you the opportunity to kind of invoke your own will, your own path, your own authority, right? I feel like you, you're setting boundaries, you know? I feel like we, we got this clarity at some point, or we, we began this process of trying to clean our glasses, trying to look at our situation objectively, which is hard, of course. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's possible to get an objective view of anything necessarily. All right. But we're trying, we're, we're removing the mask. We are trying to lift the veil and see things as they are with, with a sense of clarity. Okay. And it's interesting because we also have, well, the card of absolute clarity, the Ace of Swords. This is what you're looking for. Okay, You're looking for the Ace of Swords. You are kind of in this Princess of Swords, and you're looking for your sword. Right? You may have a, a smaller, maybe like a, a secondary sword that you carry, but you're looking for that big one, for the main, your main sense of truth. Uh, justice, your sense of purpose, your meaning, your clarity, your absolute resolve that um, will defend your path, defend your choices against anyone who might try to influence you or change your mind or tell you that you're wrong or uh, tell you what you should be doing, right? This is a real self-directed energy. And I feel like we're still in the search for this Ace of Swords, right? It could be that we're still looking for that, that absolute enlightenment, that, um, that absolute crystal clarity, right? The full activation of the chakras, the full, the full enlightenment to be able to see and understand and penetrate into the deeper meaning of everything that's going on with us, around us. Because I feel like there, there is still some loose end and it may relate to whatever this card is referring to. Now again, this is you beginning to wake up to your own kind of authority. This is you getting clarity on where your life is headed. Okay. I think this is you making that conscious decision to really rely on your own judgment, your own discernment, and there's nobody else making decisions for us, right? There's nobody else that is steering the ship except for ourselves, and of course, with the Ace of Swords, our connection to God, Goddess, Deity, Spirit, Source, right? That divine connection, Guardian Angels, Spirit Guides, that sort of thing. Um, because I feel like I feel like there was some entity, either a person, maybe it was a company, maybe it was a group of people, maybe it was some kind of non-physical entity that was trying to tell you what to do with your life. You know what I mean? Trying to make decisions for you. But what we're doing with the Four of Swords is we're putting an end to that. We're tying up that loose end. We are... We're putting a, a stop to that. We're resolving that issue completely. Maybe we're dissolving it. Because you're in this energy mode of creating boundaries for yourself. Okay. Um, 
This seems to be a pretty common theme with Capricorn, I feel. We're, we're learning how to really own our power. And a lot of it has been the clearing out of this air energy. Because I think maybe people feel like they know better. Maybe, and maybe they don't mean any harm. But they try to influence your life, where you're going, what you should do, who you should be, etc. With the Three of Wands, this is us setting some very distinct boundaries. You know, this is us. Now, we're not trying to be mean. We're not trying to be confrontational. But if somebody steps within this boundary, you have to do the appropriate thing and protect your, your space, right? Your energy, your aura. So there are, I think, more clearly defined lines that you do not want people crossing, right? Into your personal life, your private life, maybe even professional, your decisions. I don't know if you're running a business. I see that you do have a lot of things in the physical realm that you are responsible for, that you're in charge of, that you're creating. Maybe you have a lot of projects. Maybe this is uh, like your own business or something, right? So I feel like it's mostly on the path of the dove anyway. It's avoiding this trap of the air energy because I, I kind of feel like we're, we're not quite out of the woods yet, right? This is still, this is recent. This is like, you know, literally yesterday you kind of woke up to this air energy. Realize that we need our ace of swords and we need to put an end to all of the all of these these conflicts. Now, it wouldn't be a conflict if you wouldn't resist it, right? So it's not your fault that that these other maybe people, maybe family members, maybe coworkers, supervisors, I don't know, um, stepping beyond your boundaries, right? But it's not you're not the one creating the conflict. They're the ones that are stepping over the boundary, right? But because you're reacting the way you are, which is justified, which is the way I feel, the, the cards seem to say, yes, you should be reacting that way, then you look like the aggressor, right? Because you're having a reaction to what they're doing. Does that make sense? Um, so what we really are trying to do, what our effort is, uh, is to establish our boundary and and not have any conflict. We, do, we don't want to have to defend our boundaries, our borders, right? We want everybody just to leave us alone, more or less, you know? Uh, so I feel like there is some interference in, in your life, in your decisions, in the way you live your life or the things that you're doing or how you run your business, how you run your home or your life in general, okay? And we're waking up to that. That's something that maybe has been going on so long now you're starting to wake up to it and you're having a reaction against it and that's kind of taking people off guard, right? They're not used to that. But we're coming into our own power and this Three of Wands is really showing that you are, you have a very strong sense of integrity and your, your own character is very strong, you know? You're, you're guided by your, your principles. And this is something that people are going to just have to deal with. Okay. But we really, we're, again, we're that type of person. We don't want to have existing conflicts all over the place. So we're trying to just settle everything in whatever way um, this needs to be done. You know, if it's through a conversation or just a, a memo to your coworkers or, you know, whatever the case is. Um. Because, you know, our driving force is for everyone to be happy, for everyone to be successful. We're, we're not trying to just take control of everything and, and be a, a tyrant, you know. We're trying to build a life that is going to be lovely for everyone, abundant, successful, right? Happy and healthy. This is the Princess of Discs. And this shows that there is, there's room for everybody, you know, as long as people don't impose their will on you and you don't impose your will on others. We can all be successful. We can all get along. We can all rise together, right? 
And I think that's kind of a, a driving force for you. That's, it's a foundation. It's, it's one of your probably core principles that, um, you know, everybody has the right to, to go after their own success to go after what makes them happy in life, as long as we're not hurting anyone else or preventing anyone else from doing the same. But I feel with the air energy, it's other people trying to influence your choices, influence what you do in a not so nice way, right? Now, the result of all of this, this is the card for tomorrow. Six of Cups, beautiful energy. Everyone is really getting along now. This is a card that is uh, a lot of affection between you and the group. Um, this is a, a gentleness. This is an easiness now. This is everybody kind of um, getting around the water cooler and having a good laugh about something. You know, this is just a naturalness, an easiness. Um, doesn't really go into very, very deep water. You know, it's kind of casual, but it's friendly. It's nice, right? It's respectful. It's courteous. It's friendly, but it's not, it's not too personal. It doesn't cross any of these personal boundaries. It's, it's almost a very professional kind of um, dynamic, but it does have these overtones of laughter and friendliness and easiness, but it's water that doesn't go very deep, okay? I feel like this is kind of the way, the way you want things, you know? This is the tomorrow that you would like to have. You're hoping if you deal with these things now in the right kind of way, with a little bit of tact, a little bit of intelligence, with a, um, with the Four of Swords, with the, the intention to compromise and settle everything in a very calm, respectful way, but firm with boundaries, you know, then we can get to a pretty gentle relationship with these other people, who, whoever they are. It might be one person. It might be a family in general. might be the in-laws. might be um, co-workers or supervisors. might be a friend group. might be a church group. Who knows, right? Whoever it is. could be one person or many. Um, but I feel like we've had this, this kind of awakening. And I think that this has been slowly happening over the course of a few readings. We're just kind of, we're waking up to the, I don't know if it's like the, the things that you would tolerate from other people, you know, the things that you're just kind of okay with that they kind of bother you, but you, you chose not to really make a big deal about them. You chose not to really say anything. I think that's changing, okay? Because we see this beautiful, beautiful future in front of us. This is all of your potential, right? And I think once we settle the, the dynamic, and maybe we just want this kind of relatively shallow water with this group of people so that we can focus on what's really important to us, right? We don't want to be so involved in the, the depth of this path of the dove stuff because this will take up all of our time. We're focused on manifesting. We're focused on finding true love and passion and fulfillment and success. This seems rather insignificant in the grand scheme of things. So what we're trying to do is, is um, mold this in a way that is going to be the least disturbing, right? with the least disturbing. So that's why we're trying to settle this in a way that just kind of makes everybody happy, calms everybody down. We're trying to have a general dynamic with this group that's just friendly, but not too much, doesn't take much effort or much time. It's just gonna let things flow so that you can really get down to business, get down to what's really important to you. So freeing all this energy up brings us over here. And this, again, this is kind of the booby trap because we get too involved here, we stumble, we never really get over here. We just get so involved here that this becomes life. Yeah. So what we really want is magician, Mercury, the Magus, Hermes, the trickster, kind of, you know, 
The trickster is saying, look, you have all of this mental power and force. You have this electricity, this intelligence. You have this gift of communication. You could easily put all of that over here on the path of the dove stuff, and this would be this would be your life. You'd be so involved with all of this energy and this group and these people and the the kind of um, the relationships, the conflicts, the dynamics between everybody. Mercury would be happy over here. That would be totally fine. All of that mental effort can go here, and and that's that's one option. But I think you're looking for something deeper. You are looking for the deep water, but it's, it's not it. It's not over here. So the Mercury energy, this magician energy, can perform any trick you like, but you have to give it some instructions. You have to create the show. You have to, um, you know, you have to produce this thing. And then Mercury is the one that can be the, the lead actor, you know. But, um, Whatever role you give it, well, it's going to do an excellent job in that role. But we have to write this. We have to kind of create the uh, the screenplay, you know. Now, what this stage is going to consist of for you? Well, we've got the lovers card. It's in the position of the stage. It's your environment. It's your your relationship to the environment. The dynamic there. You're looking to unite. This is the card of union. It's a marriage, right? It's the lovers coming together in this beautiful wedding, um, uniting together with, with what gives you the most spiritual activation or satisfaction or meaning or purpose. What is it that you really feel in your heart, in the depths of your soul that you, you want to devote your life to. I mean, it's not this, this is the, this is the business. This is the, this is just the kind of interpersonal relationships. It's this stuff over here. That's just kind of the, the business side of things, right? But what is really meaningful and personal to you? What is it that you want to have this union with? Now, this could be finding your true love, finding your soulmate. Yeah, it could be. The lover's card doesn't always indicate a romantic relationship. Okay. It can, but not always. This is the card of choice. This is the card, well, it's kind of the card of no choice, right? It's finding that one thing that you are so fully and completely in love with that there is no choice there. There's no question, right? There's no doubt. It's, there's nothing to decide. It's just an instantaneous union, right? It's two, two magnets that just come together. They don't choose it. It's just a natural kind of law of things, you know. So um, this could be this could be anything, okay? Could be anything. And this is uh, again one of those things that is going to feel instantaneous, and and you may already know what this is. It may be part of some of the, the work over here, and this is why we're, we've woken up and we've started to create boundaries and we're trying to just kind of get this thing to be less stressful. Because you already know what you're after. You already know what your real passion is and what you're seeking. And maybe, you know, maybe we don't know. Maybe that's part of this Ace of Swords. We're still searching for our sword, our central truth, our spiritual enlightenment activation. Maybe we're still searching for that, and that enlightenment, that spiritual activation, will give you this, will we'll show you what this is. Okay? And then, then the quest really begins, right? And then we're on this path of, of achieving this. We're out uh, searching for, well, the Holy Grail. Here's the Ace of Cups. This is in the position of what you don't want, but I think this is really kind of the position of what we don't have. This is what our obstacle is. This is what our quest is. Finding this. Learning, figuring out what it is, and then going on the quest to find it, to achieve it. Okay? So I think that you, you really, before you, you take another step, you need to consider this energy here. Consider if, are you choosing this or are you choosing your Holy Grail? Is this important enough to you that you're putting all of your energy into it? 
or do we need to reevaluate what is really important to us and what our soul is yearning for and go after this? Okay. So it, it doesn't mean that you like neglect your family or your job or your business or your in-laws. Uh, it just means that we have to prioritize where we're putting all of our effort and energy. Because this, if this situation is really kind of sucking you dry, there's going to be nothing left over here. Okay. And we want the Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups, if we find this, this water, there's enough water here to go even over here in the path of the dove, to go everywhere. I mean, this is, it's an infinite kind of bliss and love and joy and beauty. So this, just finding this for yourself is going to improve all of these relationships, right? This water is going to trickle down through every, every aspect of your life, right? It's going to saturate all of the soil, every leaf, every flower, right? Every bug. But this is what we need to find. This is true happiness and true fulfillment. And what we see with this trickle-down idea, the last card is the six of discs. This is material success. This is saying, look, you find your holy grail, and every aspect of your life is going to receive the benefits from that. It's going to be on a different plane. It's going to, it's going to look different. But the, it, the energy trickles down. right? So every aspect of you and your life and your being and your soul is going to receive the benefits of this. But we have to do what fulfills us. We have to do what our soul is yearning for. And not distracting ourselves with these little petty kind of conflicts. Right? Let's, let's get this sorted out so it's the least disturbing, so it's got a nice easiness to it, so you can concentrate on discovering your true will and what's really important to you, what your soul is yearning for, what your holy grail is. When we achieve that, everything else will fall into place. Everything else. Okay. Let's look at the mystery card. And this, too, the six of pentacles is everyone else around you benefiting from it, too, right? There's enough water for everybody. So just... Achieving this is going to improve your relationships over here as well. Okay, I wanted to make sure that was clear. Thank you, Frog Friend, for keeping an eye on the mystery card. I'd like to see another six, maybe a six of uh, swords, I think would be very appropriate. Uh, but I think any card that we see is going to be useful, obviously. But I would like to see a six. We have a six of cups and discs. Um, maybe a, a six of a six of wands would be nice. But I think maybe a six of, of swords showing that we're making some progress here. Because again, the idea is not to take another step on this path of the dove until you really get a feel for this energy and understand the difference between these two areas of your life. These two levels of your of your soul really you know king of swords fire of air this is taking see we what we have on the path of the dove is fire and air right and the king of swords is the fire of the air so you're taking all of this fire this is your integrity right this these are your boundaries this is your uh your solid ego right? This is your, your conscious mind. This is your, your boundaries, right? Knowing where you end and where the rest of the world begins. It's your kind of moral compass. Uh, this is you really knowing yourself, standing up for yourself with confidence, right? This is you knowing that you are a spiritual being with autonomy and you deserve love and respect and you will give love and respect and you're going to be following your own path, making decisions for yourself, following your destiny, your will, your work. That fire energy needs to be communicated to the world, right? Through the air energy, fire of air, king of swords. So you're taking this, this core, this center, this kind of, um, you know, this set of principles that you believe in, that you live by. 
and you're expressing that out into the world in whatever situation we're talking about. Friends, family, coworkers, the in-laws, whatever. We have to express that in order to settle these, these little conflicts, you know, these little disagreements, little frictions, little stresses, and get to this Six of Cups, this ease, this gentleness. So I think this is a very appropriate confirmation card, the King of Swords. You have to be confident, but fair and calm, but you have to be assertive, right? You have to establish your boundaries and enforce them, um, but in a way that's going to improve the chances of getting what you want, which is just an easiness, tranquility. I don't want to be bothered with this stuff, right? So you have to kind of take charge and you have to speak from the, the your heart. Speak from your three of wands, right? I think this is a really good confirmation card. Now, um, we're going to do an extended Capricorn. If you'd like to stick around, just click up here. That will give you access to every extended reading, not just for Capricorn, but for every sign. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me read for you. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.